In today's episode, we'll talk about some famous proverbs and discuss how we can obtain understanding. And in Ecclesiastes, we talk about the different seasons of life, especially trusting in God when it feels dark or you only have one bar on your cell coverage. Yeah. All that more on this week's episode. Hello and welcome back to the show. We are excited to jump in today into Ecclesiastes and Proverbs. Yeah. How are you doing, Gainalyn? I'm good. I'm ready to talk about real life and the scriptures. Yeah, man. Yeah. So much good stuff today. Uh, we, we don't often do shout outs uh, as much as we used to. Yeah. But we've just received so many beautiful messages uh, over this past year and before as well, you know, Gainalyn, uh, from our the members of the church and the audience in California, in the United States. So we wanna just send a shout out to our friends in California who listen to the show. And I specifically am so grateful for a number of people in California because I have two boys that have now served missions in California while I've been a part of the show. And so many members have reached out to them and been a great part of their life. And currently, April Amore. April, you are a saint according to my son and uh, hang in there. God's timing is always right in all things. You're doing great. So thank you to everyone for your support. I, I know you have a soft spot in your heart for all the people in California. I do, and my mama was one of those moms that cut the missionaries' hair and did the laundry awesome. for the missionaries, and I grew up with the missionaries around. In Utah, we don't we don't get to hang out as much Not with as the much. missionaries. Yeah. It's a little different feel, for yeah. sure. But yeah. as, a, as a mom that had a son out and yep. the people that loved him, I think that's a good shout out, yeah. John. Well, thank you to everyone who's okay. listening and for all of your support. Uh, Proverbs, uh, we're all kind of familiar with it. It's just sort of a, a collection of uh, wise teachings that have followed mm -hmm. according to the prologue of Proverbs, which is chapter one. I think the first few verses is technically the, the prologue. And it just talks about how if we follow these Proverbs, we'll eventually acquire knowledge, wisdom, and sort of the, the gem is understanding. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's start right in Proverbs 1, 7. Famous proverb, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fear of the Lord, that's an interesting phrase, right? Uh, does God want us to be scared of him? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know that if you look at the translation of this, right. fear is more accurately translated as respect. And so I started thinking this time through the Lord, uh, synonyms for Lord, God, Jesus in the scriptures, truth, light, love, right? All those things. And so I started to think fear of the Lord, I like to equate it with a respect of truth or just the way things really are. I know I'm big on this. I kind of beat this drum all the time, but like just finding what's real in life. Everyone's so concerned about being right that sometimes we just overlook what's real. Like who cares who's right? Let's just all work together and find out how things really are with God, with life, with the universe, right? And right now there's so much confusion about what that is. Absolutely. It's creating more yep. additional anxiety because yeah. there's no absolute truth anymore. Yeah, sort of this relative truth mm -hmm. uh, movement right, where everything's relative. Mm -hmm. I, I totally understand there's room for relativism in our search for truth and our truth claims. But I also believe that there is a place in this universe for truth, just the, the, the way it is, right? Um, whether we like it or not. Things like the law of gravity, whether we like it or not. We're gonna fall right? down, yeah, yeah. yeah. So fear of the Lord or just a respect or a commitment to live in reality at all costs, this is the beginning of knowledge. Proverbs 129 sort of hits what we were uh, talking about just, just a second ago. It says, for that they hated knowledge so if we hate knowledge or sort of the way things really are and we don't choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. In other words, they didn't want my counsel, God says. They despised all my reproof. You know, God's like, guys, if you go down that road, it's just gonna be worse and worse. Please just listen. I'm not, I'm not random commandment man. Yeah. I'm really trying to I'm help you see for things. I'm doing reason. Yeah. And this is what it says, Proverbs 131, therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. That's kind of a sad verse, right? Kind of what God's saying, well, you're gonna get what you want then and, and it won't be as good as what I could have led you to, mm -hmm. right? The green pastures that he speaks about. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet 
from fear of evil. And that's another phrase that just stood out to me, quiet from the fear of evil. Not that you won't encounter evil, but when you encounter hard times and darkness, you'll be quiet in the midst of it. I love peaceful. that promise. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, in Proverbs 15, correction, or when the fruits of our choices are not what we wanted or expected, right. correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. And I just see that as meaning you'll die. It just means your quality of life will continually diminish more and more and more as long as we continue to choose to remain sort of in defiance of what's just real. Like David Thompson said, less effective. Less effective. I love that. Yeah, I remember that. I loved it. So anyway, uh, finally, verse 33 of Proverbs 15, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor, before honor comes in our life, is humility. Mm -hmm. Oh, so important. Humility and openness and acknowledgement of the way things really are and a commitment to just live according to those things regardless of my agenda or my desires. And I think it's hard to try to either follow commandments, make changes, submit to the will of the Lord if there's not humility. Yeah. So Proverbs this year, probably more than past years, huh. is familiar for the youth of the church because it's the theme. The theme, yeah. So if you have youth in your home, they better know at least a few of the verses yeah. this week that yeah. you could discuss and, and talk about in your families. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And you had a fun tidbit about that word, yeah. trust. Yeah, so in, in, the, in the Old Testament, the word faith is only used twice, which, which, which may seem strange to some of us. But the word that's used the most in the Old Testament is trust. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, the, the word that they'll use in Hebrew for trust is the same mm -hmm. as those two instances as it faith. It feels yeah. synonymous yeah, in yeah, some yeah. ways. And right? so faith is trusting in God. Yeah, and I was thinking about this idea of what you just shared about humility, about what's absolute truth, and then this idea of this year's theme being really about trusting in the Lord and not leaning onto our own understanding, which I think goes exactly with what you just already opened this discussion with. And I think it's so easy for me to kind of get out of balance in this area where I feel like I'm doing or responding to a prompting from the Lord. And so I'm, you know, yeah. heading down the road and then something gets thrown in the way and or I feel like heaven is quieter. And I've talked about this a little bit recently on the show where it's like, OK, who am I trusting? Like the lights kind of go out. Yeah. And I've had this on my mind a lot and I and I came across this great quote from Bonnie Corden from 2017. This is a great one. Where she says, the visual image, the warning comes in the words, lean not. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In English, the word lean has a connotation of physically listing or moving to one side. When we physically lean toward one side or another, we move off center. We are out of balance and we tip. Mm. When we spiritually lean to our own understanding, we lean away from the Savior. That's the key. I love that. And then she goes on to say, if we lean, we are not centered, we are not balanced, we are not focused on Christ. And so I've, I've reflected on um, a few months ago, feeling like my own understanding was really foggy and I wasn't hearing God at the same time. So the, the colliding of both those, um, situations made me more anxious, more afraid. Was I hearing the right messages from God? How mm. how was I supposed to navigate work, family, my health, all of these things? And it just started to feel like I was caught in the weeds. And we talked about it on a previous episode where you had a similar situation. You went to the Lord within a few weeks. You had some clear direction mm. on mm. what to do to change mm. it. And after we taped that episode, I it started to feel like some of the fog was starting to clear up. Mm. And I finally had words to describe this, this situation that I had found myself in for nearly nine months yeah. while doing this show, while talking about God, right? And I'm thinking like, I'm kind of like full time in your camp and I need to know that I'm hearing you because yeah. it was concerning that maybe I was putting my will above his. So I was talking to a friend one day and I said, you know, when you only have like one bar 
of cell coverage. <laughs> and you're getting like every half word. Yeah. We were talking recently on the phone and yes, you were and that's what it was. We kept like losing connection. <laughs> and and I said, I feel like that's where I've been with God. It wasn't mm. that God was gone completely. It was that I had one bar of connection. That's and so I was comparison. hearing yeah. I was hearing things like, You are a daughter of God, bagels. And I'm <laughs> like, bagels? <laughs> What, what are you saying? Or I need you to go check on your son, bagels. Bagels? Like it was just this random yeah. connection. And so during this phase that I will say it's it's starting to feel more resolved. Yeah. I feel like it was uh, a season for this. Like I was leaning on God and not trying to lean on my own understanding, but even leaning on God felt like every half bar or yeah. third word was bagels, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I think when that happens, if you're dealing with that, and if yeah. you have youth in your home right now that have now at this point in September, they've heard this theme, how many months, right? right. right. FSY, right? They've right. done all the right. lessons around it. Uh -huh. Maybe open the discussion to what happens when you don't even know how to lean on God's understanding because you're not sure you're hearing him. Yeah. And I would just say this, this reminder from Sister Corden is, at that moment, I've tried a lot the last few months to over lean into God mm. because I knew I wasn't balanced. Yeah. I knew I was vulnerable because I was hearing like every third word. Right. And that cycle has changed. And I have started to feel like I can look back a little bit, see some growth where I had mm. to learn to lean on him more because it wasn't what was working wasn't previously working. Yeah. I don't even feel like I said that effectively, but if it was a half bar well, I, explanation I, yeah, yeah, of yeah. a principle, I, I hope it translated yeah. to someone in our audience. Well, and I especially like how you alluded to the cycle of growth. Right. And how that cycle includes those moments of bagel, sort yeah. of miscommunication yes. or foggy communication or mistakes or, you know, whatever the case might be. And I think that leads nicely into Proverbs 4, 5, and 7, where this, this is what the Savior says, get wisdom. Get understanding. I mean, I say the Savior is speaking through his uh, you know, prophet and whoever is writing this. That's something we didn't talk about. Is that these, most of these are ascribed to Solomon, but mm -hmm. uh, not, all of, them, not yeah. all of them. Yeah, somewhat like Psalms. We <clears throat> don't yeah. know yeah, yeah. Right, chronologically right, right, right. where Davidic, it all. Yeah. 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 Anyway, he says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Okay, so for me, I like, I like okay, this is how I've seen this progression. And of course, you can see it differently and define these words differently if you choose. But knowledge is sort of just a basic understanding of something. We get wisdom when we act on it and we have experience right. connected with that knowledge. But then he says this, with all of your wisdom, get understanding. Mm -hmm. And I started to think, how is understanding sort of the next step beyond wisdom? And I started to see it as this cycle, this process of growth. I understand something. Sorry, I know something. I act on it. I have experiences with it. I have wisdom about it. But the understanding is the key. It's the gem because that comes from processing what I experienced. All right. Uh, for instance, uh, I'm thinking of Alma 32 and how we experiment upon the word. Mm -hmm. Let's say that I one of my experiments. And you have to protect it from the heat of the day. Right? right. Let's say that one of my experiments is, you know, I think my quality of life is going to increase if I do X. And it's something that we've been counseled against, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> let's say I make a foolish decision and I just go do it. All right. Will I get understanding? Will I be able to look back on what mm -hmm. happened and honestly answer the question? Did that experience increase my quality of life or increase my quantity of light or did it decrease it and it's oh, in our yeah. honest moment of surrender and processing in humility what actually is happening in our lives um in connection to what we are choosing in that moment of surrender in that moment of honest introspection that's when understanding comes I just thought as you were sharing that, that part of what has helped me through what I was just sharing is that I knew as a mother that my children would face their own experiences similar to what I had been navigating. Yeah. And so it gave me some empathy or understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And so I started to openly discuss with them the days that the, there was maybe two bars or maybe mm -hmm. there was one bar. Bring and, them in with you on right. that process. And so mm -hmm. sometimes like, 
just in that quality of life and quantity of light, quantity of light. I love that idea of sometimes we have taken the harder road yeah. and did it create for us more empathy or understanding yeah. for why others choose that way. And if so, then it was an experience that was worth then going through value. and our processing of it, our debriefing of it mm -hmm. was productive. I think of how Jesus, he modeled this perfectly. Jesus lived his life in complete deference to truth and reality. He just didn't care. Uh, so Pharisees and Sadducees, you need to do it this way. Jesus was like, uh, no, no, that's not true. So no, he wasn't like angry and, and, and didn't have a, you know, a sort of a, a bitter agenda. He was just like, no, nope, not true. Uh, see, someone he did an angry tweet back. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's a good one. He was just like, he would see someone doing something evil or wicked and just be like, yeah, that's, that's not right either. Mm -hmm. He just lived in this constant state of deference to what is real and what is true. What is real. And that's why C.S. Lewis yeah. calls Jesus the only complete realist. I really like that title for Jesus. And maybe I'll just finish this little part with Proverbs 16, 18, the famous one. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit, meaning a arrogant, prideful spirit. Without the humility, right. without the wisdom. This goes before a fall. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'd like to jump, jump to Proverbs 31, 20. Um, this, is, this verse says, she stretched out her hand to the poor, yea, she reached forth her hands to the needy. And when I read that, I was thinking about, um, to me, one of the greatest examples of serving this demographic of poor, yeah. which was Mother Teresa. And I found this great quote where a journalist once asked Mother Teresa about how hopeless her task seemed to be of rescuing the destitute in the city because there were so many. And this right? comes from Jeffrey R. Holland's Right, talk. he, yeah. he re-quoted yeah. re this. Yeah. He said that statistically speaking, she was accomplishing absolutely nothing. And so mm. if we think about all of us from the Book of Mormon reference, yeah. that we're all poor yeah. and we're all poor in need of something, maybe mm. it's not money or housing or food, um, Mother Teresa's response was remarkable. She said this little, he said this, this remarkable little woman shot back that her work was about love, not statistics. Notwithstanding the staggering number beyond her reach, she, she said she could keep the commandment to love God and her neighbor by serving those within her reach with whatever resources she had. And I was thinking about situations where we've we've shared on this on the show at times some some examples of where we've tried to do that. And yeah. one of them came to mind for me where I was in a CVS during the pandemic when we were really supposed to not be like associating with anyone at the store. Mm -hmm. Remember all the stickers yeah. on the floor? And I saw a woman who was distressed come in and I happened to have cash um, that I was trying to get to the bank to deposit and the ATM didn't work. And so mm -hmm. I had a lot of cash that was unusual. And I wandered around the store because I wanted to do something to help her, but I didn't know if she was going to be, like if I was in her personal right, space, right? Right. right. I and know that feeling. It was debate yeah. constant with God. Like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to hand her all the money? Do you want me to just walk <laughs> away? Do you want me to throw it in her cart? Do you, like, and finally the- <laughs> Throw it in and run away. I know. I great. mean, literally, that's what I was <laughs> thinking. And I'm like, okay, but even whatever she needs, this isn't going to be enough, right? And so I had gotten caught in the weeds in my head. Right, right. So I said a quick prayer again, like, what do you want me to do? Because now I, now I look ridiculous. Like, I'm stalking her because I'm obviously <laughs> wandering down the aisle she's wandering down. Because I'm trying to get revelation. And this was like, go talk to her. And I was like, oh, well, that's easy. I can go talk to her. <laughs> like, that's enough. You just want me to go talk to her, right? So I went up to her and it, it was tragic. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to make light of the fact that she'd literally just been thrown from her car from her boyfriend in a, an yeah. abusive situation. She was obviously upset. And um, I offered to help with whatever she needed. And she had been putting stuff in her car and taking it out. I had watched her do that. And in the end, I'm going to just say this. We had a sweet conversation. I hugged her. Sorry for all the people that said don't do that during that time. Um, and she really needed deodorant and some soap. And it makes me emotional thinking about because I thought that there's got to be more. Mm -hmm. You know, I made sure she had a place to go that was safe and someone was coming to pick her up. But I left there thinking there's got to be more. And you've shared a, a, a similar experience. Mm -hmm. And the spirit was like, you did what you could in the moment at the time. And I think my point from this verse is that sometimes we do nothing because we think we can't fix everything. Right. 
And for Mother Teresa, she was like, I'm gonna do what's in front of me, and that's enough. And, and you can't yeah. fix everything. That's the truth yeah. of it, but yeah. that's not the point. Right. You can fix something right now, today. Right, right. Um, so I'm gonna use that as a jump to Ecclesiastes. Okay, perfect. Ecclesiastes 2. Ecclesiastes, by the way, just a compilation of inspired sermons. Ecclesiastes 2, 10 and 11 says, and whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. Just talking about this life where I just did whatever I wanted. My God, whatever I want, if I wanted it, I got it. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. So here he starts off, he's like, I lived my life for myself. King Noah. Yeah, I lived my life for myself. And then verse 11, then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. There was no profit under the sun. And so I would just sort of add to your experience, are we focused on what's important or are we just living for ourselves? If you were living for yourself in that moment, you wouldn't have seen this opportunity to make a difference in that small thing for that one person at that time. Which was deodorant. It was small simple. Thing. Yeah. I want to jump to a verse that is so famous that it's been put in a song. So famous. And John and I are not going to sing I'm it. I'm not going to sing it. But we did research. It's the birds, not the Beatles. We thought, <laughs> I mean. Have you ever made that mistake? <laughs> yes. Let us know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Ecclesiastes 3.1, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. We could apply this verse to a million different things, but probably in a selfish way because of the season of life that I find myself in, <laughs> I applied it to myself because we're supposed to like That's the what scriptures. We're supposed to do. Right. And I'm we're gonna we're empty nesters now. And we have kids out of the house. And it made me think about that that season changing that is constant with parenting. Elder Holland says in one of his great talks, because she is a mother that mothers, we acknowledge the esteem, your faith in every footstep. Please know that it is worth it then and now and forever. It's so beautiful. And if for whatever reason you are making this courageous effort alone without your husband at your side, then our prayers will be all the greater for you and our determination to lend a helping hand even more resolute. He goes on to talk about the heartbreak that happens when our kids choose a different way of the things that we want. and. He encourages, you know, to not fail in our hope that this is a season. And so I was thinking about how, as Elder Holland is talking about being a mom, he gave this talk in 1997 when I had my, I was about to have my first baby. Mm. And I had this vision of like what mothering was going to be. And if I did all these things, it was like a cake recipe. And then yeah, right, if right. you had the right yep, ingredients yep. and the right temperature, and then the cake comes out and it's perfect. Right, parenting 101. Exactly. Yeah. And then fast yeah. forward when they're 24 and 18, yeah. you have a different understanding, yeah. like we were talking about from Proverbs. Yeah. And I think as you know, I've reflected and shared a lot on stewardship, this, this stewardship and the parenting season changes. Yeah. And what my kids needed when they were little is different than what they need now and it yeah. can be confusing and so i would just say maybe use that verse to ask like god what do you want me to do in this season it's different than what the season or maybe for your family it's a totally different season because yeah. your children are making different choices and not going to comparison yeah. i guess that's my point i love it well we're running out of time and so maybe as, we'll just, as, usual, as usual as per usual so let's finish with uh just sort of this concept of what you just brought up there's an ebb and flow to life i mean it just it Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. And, and I promise you, if it's easy for you right now, it's, you're going to go through a season a that's different difficult season. coming uh -huh. up. And that's just the program. It has little to do with sort of my righteousness or my unrighteousness. Uh, surely I can add weight to my life if I make bad decisions. And surely I can smooth the road a little bit if I make good decisions. But no matter how hard we try, we will not escape this ebb and flow of life like the tides. It comes in and out, in and out. And so if you are currently in a day of darkness, uh, I'll leave you with Ecclesiastes 11. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. So life is amazing, and there's lots of beautiful things that happen, but it's important for us to remember those dark times too, and to process those dark times and get understanding. I think the best conclusion is the conclusion given us in Ecclesiastes 12, 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. <laughs> you really get it that straight. And this is for Ecclesiastes and I think for Proverbs as well. It says, fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. 
For God shall bring every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And so what will I do with the agency God has given me and the atoning grace of Jesus Christ that he's made available to me? What will I do to make something out of my life? No matter what the season. Yep. So we want to leave you with an invitation that how can you more fully trust God no matter what season of life you're in, where you lean more into the understanding of him in your life. And maybe that means that you do more to stay close to him so that you can feel him and hear him even when it's a hard and difficult season. We hope that this week's discussion has blessed you in some way and helped strengthen your relationship with God. And we'll see you again next week. Do you like Real Talk? Come follow me. Then like and subscribe. 